thousands of Ontarians have stepped up to lend a hand. This morning, I went to the new Daily Bread warehouse. These guys are just incredible over there, absolutely incredible. With funding from the province, they put together 60,000 hampers of food, all to help those most in need across the city. And I also want to give a shout out to Feed Ontario. They were both there, incredible groups. My friends, it's this kind of action that shows what it means to be Canadian. This is what the Ontario spirit is all about. We know COVID-19 has taken a toll on everyone. And for those who may be isolated from their loved ones, our seniors and those with disabilities, we know this has been especially difficult and we're here to help. In April, our government partnered with Spark Ontario. We invested $100,000 to help this platform connect community orga organizations with the volunteers they need during COVID-19. We issued a call for reinforcements to help us deliver the extra meals and supplies and support those most in need. Today, I'm so proud. Over 6,500 Ontarians answered this call. That's over 6,500 people who raised their hand to help deliver vital necessities, support local food banks, or check in on those who need extra support. To everyone who signed up, I thank you. Almost one month ago, we launched the Ontario Community Support Program. Since then, we've received over 500 meal referrals and over 2,000 essential supply referrals for deliveries to those in isolation, low-income seniors, and people with disabilities and chronic medical conditions. The need is great, but the people of this province are meeting the challenge with kindness, compassion, and generosity. My friends, we're all in this together. Let's keep that Ontario spirit going, because that's what will get us through this. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. I'll pass it over to Minister Sarkaria. Good afternoon and thank you very much, Premier. On behalf of my colleague, the Minister of Seniors and Accessibility, Raymond Cho, I would like to say a few words about the spirit of volunteering in Ontario. As you just heard the Premier say, the incredible work of our volunteers and the commitment of our government have helped spark Ontario, increase its capacity and better respond to the COVID-19 outbreak. During these challenging times, Spark's mission of matching volunteers with local nonprofit organizations and communities all across Ontario couldn't be more important. The work that our Spark volunteers are doing, helping seniors, people with disabilities, and other vulnerable Ontarians get the assistance and support they need is providing a lifeline and a ray of hope to some of those most deeply impacted by COVID-19. And as the Premier announced, since April 9th, more than 6,500 Ontarians have registered to volunteer through the website, with an additional 3,100 contacting community organizations regarding volunteer opportunities. Thank you to everyone who has volunteered their time to help those in need, and I encourage everyone who can to get involved. If you can volunteer, or if you are looking for volunteers, visit sparkontario.ca. On behalf of grateful Ontarians across our province, thank you for your acts of kindness and generosity. But in addition to our volunteers, Ontario's business community has also been truly extraordinary in the response to COVID-19. People and businesses have made tremendous sacrifices to contain the virus by following guidelines provided by our government and our health and safety association partners. We applaud their efforts. They have made a real difference. And we want to recognize the efforts of those working to lend a hand and offer a shoulder of support. We want to commend small businesses that have gone the extra mile. Small businesses like J Red and Co, MGR Construction Services and Mount Vesuvio have shown Ontarians that small businesses truly have big hearts. These three businesses are part of the Free Meal Help Initiative 
and have banded together to create a program that delivers free meals to senior citizens in need throughout my hometown of Brampton. This trio of businesses has worked together to deliver more than 10,000 meals through a no-contact process to seniors in isolation. The difference they are making is real, and they have managed the feat of bringing people closer together in Brampton at a time when social distancing has kept us apart. Through our Small Businesses Big Hearts campaign, which we are launching today, we want to hear more stories that show us what true Ontario spirit is all about. Stories that remind us that Ontario remains a place where people are eager to bring a ray of sunshine into someone else's life. Stories that embody the phrase, small businesses, big hearts. Stories that bring us hope. So please reach out to share the positive news about small businesses that have gone above and beyond to support your community as we all weather the storm of this pandemic. Let's make sure the Ontario spirit strengthens the foundations of our communities and helps see us through the recovery to come. Thank you. We'll go to the phone line for questions. First question. First question comes from Travis Danrash from Global News. Please go ahead. Hi there, good afternoon, Premier. Uh, as we saw in Trinity Bellwoods, many people are not listening to your advice and the advice of public health officials, and there's no indication that any amount of begging will change behavior as weather gets better and people want to get outside. Uh, the case numbers in Ontario are now trending upwards, and the province is failing to meet testing targets. Are you going to be rolling back restrictions that have been eased so far, and if not, why not? Well, first of all, uh, Travis, I'm, I'm disappointed, to say the least, with everyone that showed up to Trinity Bellwood on, on uh, Saturday. I, I went by on Sunday, and I didn't see that many people, but uh, my recommendation to anyone at Trinity Bellwood why don't you do us all a favor and, and go get tested now? Go go to the local hospital assessment center and, and get tested. And I encourage anyone who's been in large gatherings uh, like that and some of the stuff that was going on there, uh, they they need to get uh, tested. So that that's what I would uh, recommend. I'm not going to punish the whole province because a, a group of people in, in Toronto ended up getting together. And, and it's not fair to even everyone else in, in Toronto uh, as well. Uh, in all, all uh, areas of, of Toronto that uh, uh, didn't have the, as I, I said on Sunday, it was like a rock uh, concert without the band. So, they, they, you know, these are smart young people that were there. Like, come on, guys, give me a break. You know, just just uh, don't do reckless things like that. I, I just, because they're, they're obviously smart, smart young people in the city. And I, that's what took, took, took me back. I'm thinking, wow. That's the last group I, I'm thinking that would be out there, but, uh, you know, they did. And now, uh, hopefully, it's not going to happen again. What I worry about, Travis, is them going back home. How about their family members, their brothers, sisters, mothers, aunts, you know, grandparents? They, they, weren't they thinking of them when, when they went there? But, uh, no, I, I'm not going to punish the rest of the, the province. Uh, and, and on that... Uh First off, do you think the mayor needs to get a test as well? Because he was there and he had his mask down. And also, you, you mentioned uh, Toronto uh, a bunch of times uh, that, you know, you're not going to punish the rest of the province for what happened in Toronto. And we are seeing the largest number of cases in the GTA. Do you think that uh, you now need to look at a regional approach to reopening the economy? Well, first of all, I'll answer the first question about the mayor. That, that's up to the, the mayor. He's been working hard day in and, and day out, every single day. I've, I've talked to him all over the weekend, saw him again this morning. So uh, he's working his, his, his back off. And as to have two tiers of opening up the province, it just doesn't make sense. The people of Toronto are going to go into rural areas. And uh, we, we need to tighten things up. And I, I want to say, I mean, we can't paint a broad uh, brush across Toronto like 99.9% .9 of the people are phenomenal. Uh, you get the odd group that, you know, misbehaves, as, as you might say, and and that that's not reflective of the people of Toronto. The people of Toronto have been incredible, absolutely incredible. They're doing great, and and uh, I just appreciate everything they've been, they've been doing. Next question. Next question comes from Lucas Meyer from News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Um, Premier, uh, 
now that you've changed the regulations for testing, are you also going to expand and expedite in some way drive through testing in an attempt to get more people in there as well? Maybe they may not feel like going through their feet or some drive through testing. Are you going to try to push that more? And are we also going to get some updated projection models? Well, Lucas, I'll, I'll tell you, it's been no, no secret that I've been uh, pushing this very, very hard to get testing uh, where it needs to be. And as Premier, it's, it's my job to push the system. And I've been saying that. i got to push the system, push the system. And it's also my job, uh, anyone who's worked in government, uh, it's my job to break down these silos within the government. And uh, again, this weekend, we began the first steps of a robust testing program uh, in the community. Uh, we initiated, first of all, Lucas, we, we initiated testing of even more hospital workers uh, across the province. Uh, we have 141 uh, private hospitals and I think four, four uh, I'm sorry, 100, I apologize, 141 uh, public hospitals, four private uh, hospitals. I encourage them to test uh, their staff. We initiated uh, testing of, of inmates and staff and correctional facilities across the province. We put the, the call out to everyone in Ontario. If you have symptoms, if you're worried, you've been in large groups, like, like what happened on, on the weekend in the park, uh, and you're worried about you having COVID, or if you're worried uh, you've been in contact with uh, someone who might have had COVID, uh, please go get tested. And I, I can tell you, I'm so proud. When I drove in and I went by a couple hospitals and there's a, there's a lineup for the first time at Women's College, I, I just got to thank the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. Because no matter what we do, municipalities do, or, or the province uh, does, we can't do it without the support of the people. And the people have been absolutely phenomenal. So thank you for listening to the call. And in, in the coming days, um, what we're going to do is we're going to launch the next steps of our robust testing uh, strategy. And we'll, we'll be going into uh, hotspots, so communities that uh, are lighting up on our, on our map and encouraging people to get out there and get tested. We'll be, uh, jo we'll be going into workplaces, as, as I mentioned, I think it was on, on Friday, going into uh, community areas where there are large numbers of people. Anywhere there's large numbers of people or large employers, uh, we're going to go in there. Encourage, we want to encourage uh, people in the hot spots. Again, uh, we will be announcing that. Please get tested. But uh, Lucas, we'll, we'll be launching a robust uh, public awareness campaign and we'll continue doing everything we can to get those daily uh, numbers up where where they need to be and and uh, we'll we'll be there uh, to help uh, but we'll need everyone as I said uh, to get involved and again just the people have been incredible and I bet but I do have to, to mention as we're doing this uh, it will take time uh, to fully ramp up we're ramping up as we talk right now in the testing strategy but I'm confident that uh, we'll, we'll get there very soon. But I, Lucas, I'll tell you, I was so happy. And I talked to uh, some of the ministers. Uh, Prab told me when he went by Brampton, uh, there was a lineup. So uh, that, that just makes my day. It really does. So thank you, and everyone. Pre and Premier, as I'm sure you saw, the CFIB, Restaurants Canada, Ontario Chamber of Commerce, they have an open letter asking you for a moratorium on those commercial evictions. We just heard from a Waterloo-based company last week, family-run, they have a virtual arcade, 15 locations, and like so many others, landlords are not applying for the relief program. You've said before, just hang in there, well, let's see what happens. Well, they've hung in there, and they've seen what's going on, and they're terrified. So all those groups are watching you right now. Yep. Is a moratorium coming? So, Lucas, uh, it hasn't even begun yet, so I don't know how, how they say they aren't going to apply. Maybe they've heard it verbally, but uh, it's, it starts this week. And I can assure you, I'm, I'm asking the landlords again. We put close to, with the federal government, we put close to a billion-dollar program in that we're asking for 25% off them. And the federal and provincial government are paying 50. The tenant will pay 25%, and I believe it starts tomorrow. And they, they need to uh, start signing up for this because they aren't going to like the consequences if they don't sign up for it. Uh, I can assure you, I'm protecting the tenants. Simple. I appreciate the landlords. I appreciate what they're doing. But when someone comes there with a handout, an olive branch, and, and tell, the, tell the landlords, here, here's an olive branch. We're trying to help you get 75% because you won't be getting anything if you, if you kick your tenants out. And, uh, and then, then all the tenants are going to get hurt. 
but please, I'm asking, I'm begging you, landlords, please sign up. Because I, trust me, uh, if, if they don't sign up, then we'll, we'll, uh, there'll be consequences. Simple as that. Next question. Next question comes from Allison Jones from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier. Hi, Allison. Um, we asked last week about um, the increasing numbers of cases, seeing consistently over the past several days numbers uh, in the 400s. At the time last week, um, I think it was Minister Elliott said, you know, it was just too early to tell why this was happening. Have you gotten any indications yet as to why we're seeing this rise? Well, Allison, I'm going to pass this over to Minister Elliott. Well, the increase in uh, the number of cases that we're seeing now in the last few days really relate back to the week before uh, with uh, the uh, Mother's Day events and so on, people seeing families uh, when they should not have been more than five people together. Um, but what we're going to see uh, going into towards the end of this week will really be more uh, based on what's happened with the opening up of the economy that started last week. And that's where both Dr. Williams and I will be very uh, interested in the numbers. We hope that they will continue to go down. But if they continue to increase, then that will be a time for us to, uh, to stay paused, to look at the situation, understand why the numbers are increasing, and uh, take action or don't take action going forward. So I know that everyone's very anxious to be able to have more things open, to have restaurants opened and, and other things opened, but we have to make sure that we do this responsibly. People have to make sure they continue that physical distancing. That is still vitally important for us to be able to move our economy forward and to be able to move things open more socially and, and uh, with friends and so on. So please, everyone, if you want to go to the parks, if you want to enjoy yourself, we're not telling you not to, but please maintain that social distancing. It's still vitally important. Thank you. And um, Premier, you had mentioned um, on the testing that you're going, you're going to focus on hot spots. I know we've seen um, in the daily numbers reports um, that a lot of the cases in the province are in the GTA. Are you looking to target the GTA, or how specific are you looking to get? I think you've mentioned postal codes in the past. Yeah, so we, we uh, measure it by postal codes, and like I've mentioned, some, some areas are lighting up like a, a Christmas tree, and uh, parts of Peel Region, not all, all Peel Region, so Peel Region, uh, parts of uh, Toronto, not all, all of Toronto, and, uh, and then uh, uh, Windsor-Essex uh, area. Th those are, are some. Some of the areas that we're going to focus on, I, I had a conversation with Mayor Brown on, on the weekend, kind of one of the hot spots are up in one part of uh, Brampton, another hot spots in, in my area in northern Etobicoke and then uh, the Scarborough. So I've reached out to Mayor Brown and uh, we're really going to uh, drive the testing, um, get people out where, where the hot spots are, get them tested. It's absolutely uh, critical. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, and I, I got to make sure we're, we're fully ramped up, but uh, I want as many people tested as, as possible. Uh, asymptomatic, symptomatic. Uh, wouldn't it be great, um, you know, if we could, we could catch a lot of people that don't show symptoms, but are asymptomatic and are going around spreading it. No, no fault of their own, by the way. Uh, th that's, that's how we have to get a handle on this. And I, I don't have to tell you how much I've been, I've been pushing this, this testing, but uh, we have a strong, strong plan. I want to thank the health team. Uh, everyone on the team, they've worked all weekend. Uh, we were burning up the phone lines all weekend and uh, we have a, a good, solid plan uh, moving forward. Next question. Next question comes from Brian Lilly from the Toronto Sun. Please go ahead. Uh, Premier, you've uh, been expressing your displeasure at the, uh, the testing numbers uh, for about a week now. <clears throat> I'm wondering why you haven't uh, decided to try and move the province towards random testing. You've already tested everyone in long-term care. I'm assuming you're continuing to test uh, health care and LTC workers. But uh, some places, Windsor, for example, have started doing random tests of yeah. the public. Is that something that you will... Uh, ask, request, push other regions to move towards to? Absolutely. We'll, we'll be pushing all regions to do 
do more testing. But Brian, good good question. We we had the inferno happening at long-term care, and we had to put all our resources into long-term care. We ended up getting through all the testing of patients and and the frontline healthcare workers. We're going back and we're going to test them again. And then we were doing the uh, congregate living shelters and along with the seniors uh, residents. So that, that's, a, that's a lot of people uh, to be tested. Uh, we went through it. Now we're going to uh, move. We're going to continue testing long-term care. We're building new resources up to do uh, uh, the communities and especially the hotspots and uh, large employers uh, right across this, this province. So we're ramping it up, and we'll have the resources uh, ready to, to do those tests. And Don, this next question, Premier, I'd like to hear from you, but also from uh, Minister uh, Sarkaria. No. The move towards allowing both cannabis and alcohol delivery or takeout options for restaurants and bars when it comes to alcohol was something that your government put through for uh, the pandemic, but it is the type of liberalization that your your government has looked to do in the past. Mm -hmm. Will you be looking to keep that? Do you see any reason that we should go back to the prohibition uh, era regulations that have been in place in Ontario for decades, or can we keep yeah. what you uh, have allowed us to have now? So we're going to have that, that uh, conversation uh, with Minister Phillips. There's going to be a lot of things, uh, as we say, the, the new way of doing business, and not, not only in government, but in, uh, in the private sector, too, I've talked to so many CEOs, and they've realized, wow, there, there's a better way of doing things, more efficient way of doing things that are going to be benefit not just the customer, but benefit uh, their staff and their, their employees. But I'll pass this over to uh, Minister Sarkaria. Uh, thank you for the question, Brian. And I, I have to recognize that, you know, since this pandemic, uh, uh, we've really been looking uh, towards, uh, you know, we, we opened up a website, the uh, Tackling the Barriers, and its aim was exactly this, how to support businesses through this uh, pandemic and how can we give them an opportunity uh, to somehow increase, uh, whether it's uh, sales in, in, in this case uh, or profits for small businesses. And, and that's exactly what we did. I think there's a huge role for uh, us to, to use uh, regulations to modernize uh, not only the way that that, uh, government works, uh, but also modernize the way that businesses uh, interact with the government and how businesses uh, can actually use it as a, as a tool for economic, uh, I would say, uh, uh, stimulus. And so uh, all the uh, suggestions that have come through that portal, we're, we're still examining, we're looking at, you know, we made over 40 changes, whether it was changes to uh, allow uh, truckers or trucking companies to, to move goods 24-7. Uh, you know, I would say that all the conversations that I've had with uh, small business owners, uh, restaurant owners that are, are using this, um, have given us great feedback on how much of uh, help it's been. Uh, and so it's going to be important to hear more of that as we as we continue to, to move forward. Uh, but this government will do anything it, it can to support our small businesses. We'll do anything we can to support our restaurant owners. And, and this is one way that we thought we could. Um, and I'm happy to hear that to Many businesses are, are, are really benefiting from it, and so uh, we'll continue as uh, as we uh, continue to examine these type of regulations. We also encourage other businesses, if they have ideas, to, to really pitch those to us through the tackling the barrier website that we've been able to to put up and launch, because we want to be able to support uh, small businesses and businesses uh, through this pandemic. Next question. Next question comes from Christina Tanalia from CP24. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier and Hi, Ministers. Um, about two weeks ago, Ministers Elliott and Phillips both stated Ontarians could expect an, an announcement on group sizes in the next few days. Uh, so that was two weeks ago, but last week came and went without an announcement. And Dr. Williams said himself last week that he wasn't enhancing the current maximum five people order. So is there still an announcement on group sizes coming? When and if not, is this because of some of the gatherings we've seen in the province in the last few days, like in Trinity Bellwood? I'll have uh, the, the minister answer that one. Thank you. Well, we had been discussion, discussing uh, pools um, of people that could be together, the uh, social cohorting and so on. Um, but uh, given what's happened with the numbers of uh, people uh, coming down with uh, COVID uh, in the last few days, uh, along with what has happened over this past weekend with large groups of people coming together in Trinity Bellwoods and other parks, 
Uh, Dr. Williams is reluctant to move forward with, uh, with that right away because there is a concern about people creating groups that are too large. So it is something that will be coming forward, but it has been pushed up back a little bit because of what we've seen over the last few days in terms of people gathering together and with the numbers of new cases moving forward. But we are still looking at it. Uh, we'll have to wait to see the numbers come down first before we implement it. Okay, thank you. Uh, my next question, I mean, I, I recognize that there is, uh, the numbers are down today, but there has been an upward trend with the numbers. So, of course, uh, all emergency orders have been extended until May the 29th. The province's state of emergency is in effect until June the 2nd. Can Ontarians expect any kind of easing of orders uh, in areas where it's safe to do so? For example, we're hearing that dentists are preparing to reopen on June the 2nd. Well, everything's on the table, but we're very cautious. As soon as we see these numbers climb a bit, you get a little little gun shy. But again, we're going to work with our health table, and uh, Minister Elliott's done an incredible job, and we're going to work with the Chief Medical Officer of, of Health, and that's going to determine it. I, I just wish I could I could tell you what's going to happen next week, but we none of us uh, know the exact numbers. Uh, we thought we were going down a couple of weeks ago, and then all of a sudden it, it jumped up a little bit over over the last uh, week. So we have to keep a sharp eye on it, and that's what's going to determine it, uh, Christina. That's that's the key factor. Next question. Next question comes from Colin DeMello from CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Premier. I just wanted to get uh, a sense of what changed over the weekend. On Friday, you had said only symptomatic patients should be or people should be tested. On Sunday, you said asymptomatic or anyone uh, really who has had contact with somebody who has COVID-19 um, can get tested. I, I'm, I'm just wondering here, um, what changed? Did you manage to convince our medical health officials that this was necessary, or did you have to battle it out with them for them to come around to your way of thinking on this? Well, first of all, there's been absolutely, and I'll tell you 100%, there hasn't been battles. Uh, there's always, when you have a group of people um, together, there's uh, discussions, and not everyone always agrees, but we always come out with a, a you know, common cause to make sure we, uh, it's the betterment of the people of on, Ontario. And we feel there's the, the next uh, uh, phase is to go out there and start testing uh, asymptomatic and, and symptomatic. Our main focus, Colin, was on the, the long-term care. And don't get me wrong, it still is our, our uh, main focus. But we're ramping up to uh, continue uh, uh, focusing on, on the broader public now. Uh, we're always going to we're always going to uh, give it uh, our 100 percent attention to long-term care, but we're also focusing on, on the public. And I'll, I'll hand this over uh, to Minister Elliott to speak further on it. As the Premier said, we're always going to keep focused on the, the people who really need our help, people in long-term care, of course. It's not just a one-step process. You have to test them, but then you have to go back and you have to keep testing. Do um, surveillance, do uh, testing of residents, but also testing staff as well. We want to continue with retirement homes as well. That's other areas of congregate living. Uh, group homes, shelters, we're moving forward there. We. All of those places need to have the testing done. And then, of course, we, uh, for people that want to come to our assessment centres, if they have symptoms, if they're worried that they have COVID, of course they're going to be able to be tested. So this is really just a, a moving forward in the plan that we've always had. Now that the long-term care has been done once, we're moving into the other areas and, and retirement homes are, are also a focus. So we're going to keep doing that and, uh, and of course testing in the public, going to large employers, making sure that if there are outbreaks in certain areas we want to test there, we'll want to test symptomatic as well as asymptomatic people because we really want to know what's happening with the opening up of the economy and the only way you'll do that is to be able to go to the workplaces to find out. Uh, thank you. And I just have a question about um, the, the province taking over the management of two long-term care homes. Um, two long-term care homes will come under the management of two uh, regional hospitals for the next 90 days. Uh, the Minister of Health had said earlier that this would only happen if a long-term care home was resisting health. So can you tell us what, what were the circumstances surrounding um, you know, the province moving in here and were these homes resisting help from the province? Well, I think this would be a, a good answer for the Minister of Long-Term Care.
So thank you, Colin. I want to make sure that everyone knows, everyone in Ontario knows that our number one priority and our commitment is to the safety of our residents and staff in long-term care. That's the very first thing. And we've taken measure after measure after measure to make sure that happens. And when we look at homes that are struggling um, to stop or contain the spread of COVID-19, uh, despite the measures we've taken with the infection prevention and control, uh, with having public health give risk assessments, with our inspectors going in to assess the homes and they're still having troubles, then our obligation uh, as a government is to take another measure. And this is another measure to make sure that the safety of those residents is being safeguarded. Last question. Last question comes from Laura Stone from The Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Hi, Laura. Hi, Premier. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I'm, uh, I'm wondering about your announcement yesterday about the testing, and you, you encouraged families, people to bring their families to assessment yes. centres. Can you explain that a bit more? Should people really be bringing their kids to the assessment centres, and Not, uh, should the yeah. strategy be a bit more focused than that on, on high-risk uh, employers? Can so, you explain? Yeah, so, Laura, not, not, not so much the, the kids, but um, I, I've really encouraged the, the adults to, to go there, and I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, people are listening and they're, they're going to get uh, tested. So I'm going to, uh, again, I'm going to pass this over to the Minister of Health. Uh, she's been working on it uh, all weekend, but thank you. Well, I think it really makes sense in a family when you have uh, five people living together, whatever the size of the family is, that uh, all of the adults should get tested. If one person has symptoms, the, uh, the other members of the family uh, may be asymptomatic at the moment, but they may also have COVID. So we really want to make sure that we can look at the entire family. Um, and of course, if children are showing any signs, they should also be tested. But as the Premier said, it's really important for all adults in the family to be tested if one has symptoms so that you can make sure that you can contain the spread and it may be the, whole, the entire family needs to go into self-isolation for 14 days. But we want to make sure that we can be as careful as possible with this to contain that spread. And on the new testing strategy being released this week, it's our understanding it's going to be overseen by Matt Anderson and the chief coroner. Is there a reason that Dr. Williams isn't involved in this? Well, everyone, everyone's going to be involved, and we, we always uh, work as a, as a team, as a health team. And uh, i, I got to tell you, Dr. Williams has just been working day in and day out. I tell you, talk about earning your pay. He's, he's, he's been working his back off. And uh, the province is massive, uh, geographically, number one massive and I always say it's almost twice the size of, of, of Texas to put it into perspective and uh, we have 14 and a half million people so Dr. Williams is going to continue focusing on uh, you know outbreaks and, and be it in long-term care or seniors or congregate living and uh, Matt Anderson and uh, Ontario Health are going to be there uh, supporting supporting uh, going out there and, and testing uh, large employers uh, going into communities, so it's it's all hands on deck, and and I, I appreciate uh, the the offer of help uh, from from Matt Anderson and his team, as he's building up the team uh, over the next uh, week or so. It'll allow us to go out there and increase uh, testing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Go out there, get tested. Thank you to everyone in Ontario. God bless you. Thank you.